purpose of this today is is in a format where we're just kind of conversational, talk a little bit more about about the concept of sagittal first and the product, um, and kind of uh, of just kind of go through some of your thoughts and ideas of of how it all came about and and why it's so important so, so important to clinicians to staff members and most importantly to patients. It's all motion all day every day whether it's my class two cases my class three cases and whatever. class one cases because and class one chronic cases yeah. asymmetry cases that's what I wanted to bring up mm -hmm. yeah that we're just now touching the surface of how much it can help us yeah um, I was uh, walking when we went for a cup of coffee with Dan Abood who's here from Australia mm. and and he's done a fair number of class twos and he's starting to do some class threes I said wait till you start treating this asymmetry patients mm -hmm. and he was like well how does that work and I said, well, I saw Luis show one or two, and now it's like, it's not an issue, no surgery. It's like, it's easy. and that, that I think is going to really change the world for a lot of orthodontists because they're the hardest patients to treat. I think it's going to pique a lot of interest in yeah. people that normally think, I got this, I know what the thing is, I know what it does, but See. nobody has mastered asymmetry yet on a, on a routine basis. I sort of feel like I have. <laughs> I, mean, and, yeah. I mean, that's kind of a cocky thing to say, but it's, it's, but it's, it's, it's simple. Very, it's, it's very simple. simple. It's totally it's, it's simple because it, you, you have know? to order the half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't, you, there's no protocol change in our yeah. practice anymore. Yeah. And that's what I really love about it is our staff knows every step, every way, it doesn't matter whether it's class one, class two, or class three, these are the things that we do for all the patients. So these asymmetry cases, they fall right in line. There's no, there's nothing unique about Absolutely. them anymore. And the asymmetry cases are the reason, if people go, is, is, a, is it 3D just because it's a trendy thing to put on it? No, we're literally changing faces in every dimension now with with very little effort for the patient. It also translates over to, you know, when you're talking to the patient, the mom, or the adult patient on the front end. You know, sometimes they get hung up. Are we gonna do aligners? Are we gonna do braces? You know, so now, you know, and that could be a sticking point of if they're gonna start or not. It's not a sticking point anymore. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not relax when you yeah, tell them. Relax, yeah. you, you know, well, you don't have to decide right now. And it's like, <sighs> right. One of the most, uh, the most complex things, in my opinion, is to solve the sagittal dimension. And, and the accomplishment of the adequate position in the sagittal dimension uh, is the, probably one of the most difficult things that we face as orthodontists. Mm -hmm. So accomplishing a class one occlusion, first of all, we accomplish a beautiful functional occlusion at the beginning. And we generate a scenario of perfect fit of class one in, uh, in, a, in a locking uh, scenario. No? Mm -hmm. Then the second part is easy. We can switch into aligners, we can switch into braces. Let's, let's back up a little bit, if we may, and talk about pre uh, sagittal first, pre motion 3D. Um, of what, what it was like in your practice, too, when, when you would see a, you know, a, a typical class two patient, whether it's three millimeters or four or seven millimeters of overjet come in your practice, what would be going through your head in terms of your approach to that case and some of the challenges that you would expect? You know, it's like that was always one of those things where. You know, you'd see the case and you go, can I do it in elastics? And then it's like, oh, no, I can't. I got to do a Herbst appliance because that was my go-to appliance. And uh, so in the, typically I would have used a Herbst in the past. And one, a Herbst appliance is the only real emergency that an orthodontist ever sees. Herbst breaks and, you know, doesn't matter what time of day it is on the weekend, you got to go and fix it because they can't close their mouth and mm. everything else. So transitioning to uh, using the motion, you immediately remove the only emergencies that are truly emergencies in orthodox. Right. And so as an orthodox, that simplifies my life amazingly. And now that I've you know, been using it for four or five years, when patients come in for a second opinion and the first opinion showed them a Herbst appliance, and I still have one on a model. I said, oh, you mean this? Yeah. And I said, we can get the same or better result with this. Yeah. And every single mom, the light goes off and go, well, tell me how that works. You know, it dawns on me that when you're trying to tell a patient why they're wearing rubber bands and doing it the way that we used to do it, you know, four, five, six years ago, they have no idea what it is we're trying to do, especially because the changes happen so slowly. Mm -hmm. And their teeth are already all strapped up in braces and they've been doing this for a long time. Everything feels the same. You do it differently by treating it at the beginning 
and they feel and see the changes. So, man, you talk about keeping their head in the game. The old standard was to use a herps, basically, for most of the orthodontists in the world, mm -hmm. right? For large class two class corrections. Two corrections. not even large, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and anything yeah. over half cusp. Exactly. For me and even hurts. then, you would have to wear rubber bands continuously afterwards yep. to hold it there. Uh, and so, the new standard, and I love when, when Jep talks about his lunchroom experience patient, uh, that, that he describes using the Motion 3D and the kid goes, oh, yeah. everyone at my lunch table has one of those. I mean, it's becoming the new standard. And yeah. when you showed him the Herbst, he goes, no, 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 no. the Motion 3D is great. Yeah. First time um, I was introduced to Motion 3D properly, and that was by you, in uh, 2015, September. Yeah utterly transformed my practice that day because I, you know, was watching these cases and I'm looking at case and timeline and I'm like, I'm, first of all, I'm not doing that result. And second of all, I can't get even remotely close to those timelines, you know, in my, in my case results. And so the only variable that was different, cause I was passive self ligation. Yeah. Same arch wires, same treatment philosophy. The only variable that was different was the motion 3D. And so that, you know, I sat there and said, okay, I'm going home, we're getting a kit, and we're gonna start. And that was the moment that my practice, it literally was a paradigm shift in our practice. Now you're an expert. Back, you're a global <laughs> expert, eh? No, no. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a young Padawan. No, um, no, no, no. you're you a super know, expert. It's, super you know, expert. it's not, not really a young Padawan. <laughs> yeah, that a but, uh, you know, it's, it now has become one of those things in our practice that, you know, our staff looks back on it, and you want to talk about practice happiness. Yeah. You know, with the protocols that we've done and the paradigm shift that happened within the practice over the last two and a half years, it's everybody knows where everything's at the whole time, regardless of whether they're class one, class two, or class three. And it's just like plug and play. And our treatment times now are down to class ones. We're getting nine, 10 months. Class twos, I'm predictably at 14 to 16 months for class twos. And I'm not talking quarter cusp class twos. I'm talking three quarter step, yeah. and sometimes sure. full step. Well, I mean, you know, you it's unbelievable. Just compare the difference in complexity, both in, in, in the mechanics, but also just frankly starting a patient with right. something Onboarding like a Mara is. appliance or a Herps appliance. Everything you've got to do, you've got bands, you've got separators, you've got cement, you've got to do all this. You've got arms, impressions, the whole thing. Now start thinking about the simplicity that happens when we decide to start a patient, whether it's class two, class three, and it is a couple of bonded appliances, a couple of brackets, and a retainer of some kind, and the way they go, out the door. I mean, you talk about easy for the patient, I'm talking about easy for the doctor. That was right. another transformation in our practice because when we onboarded with the Motion 3D, we turn around and our, you know, same day starts, you know, that was a heavy emphasis in our community. And it's just one of those things in the U.S. So do our same day starts, but that is an onerous time commitment on the schedule. 60 minutes, 45 minutes at yeah. minimum. You, you use a word there that I think is pretty important because you said onboarding. You know, we do that all the time in orthodontics. Yeah. You don't even really, there is no real onboarding with this. I mean, with Motion 3D, it's just like learn how to put that on a tooth. The Motion 3D works predictably exactly the way we expect it to on every single patient with the only limiting factor being compliance. And they're so excited at the beginning, that is not a problem. Maybe one patient a year. And, yeah. and, and try to think about the emergencies that we have with the motion through oh. They don't exist. No, yeah. They just don't, there aren't any. Uh, they just don't exist. But one of the things that is very interesting is that the patients and the mothers and the parents and everybody involved around the treatment, they understand our project. Mm -hmm. They understand it. They understand the steps that we are following. We are looking for a class one. We are looking for establishing a perfect occlusion over the posterior segments. Yeah. And afterwards, we are going to align your upper teeth, align everything, settle perfectly, beautifully with these beautiful appliances, and we will end up your treatment. So everybody in the family, they beautifully understand which is the protocol, which is the effect, the sagittal first concept, the, 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 the concept of establishing a perfect matching occlusion of class one with emotion. The 3D appliance, and, 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 and the patient becomes an expert of the orthodontic treatment. That's right. I mean, Luis, think about 
if we even described it at all to our patients, what we were doing, there was so much going on in their mouth that it was almost impossible to singularly identify what is it that you're actually doing. If there's only one thing going on, I mean, if there are no brackets, there's nothing other than a couple of bars and a bracket that you're wearing a rubber band to, all of their focus is on exactly what is happening in their mouth. They get it. And, and we're actually, at least in my practice, we're actually explaining it a lot better to our patients than we did prior, several years ago, before I was using the Motion 3D protocol in my practice. We just wouldn't even say anything. We're just like, wear your rubber bands. That's all you got to wear your rubber bands. Now they're looking at the photos. Yeah, they're, they're understanding. The Motion 3D appliance has, has taken off incredibly, uh, the la especially the last couple of years. It's become the fastest growing appliance sold uh, around the world. It's become the number one device for both class two and class three correction. But my question for you is, what, what would you say to colleagues, docs that you come across that haven't yet started using the Motion 3D appliance or the concept of sagittal first with Motion 3D and are still somewhat skeptical. What, what would you say to them about if or why they should start and how they should go about it? Trying to introduce this to somebody is, what have you got to lose? You're not changing your bracket systems. You're not changing anything. You're, you're, you're using something that can be used any, in anybody's hands very easily. Easy to teach staff, easy to do the, you know, you teach the patients. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would say, what do you got to lose? Tr try it. My second favorite thing is no bands. I, I cannot stand banding patients. I hate it. I hate watching my staff. The patients can't stand it. God forbid you still have one of those reciprocal thumpers in your office. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, can you, oh yeah, thunk, 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 thunk. you know, so, um, but as far as no bands are concerned in the practice, it, it, we've utterly eliminated them. I, don't, I can't remember the last time I seated a band in our practice. I mean, it's, it, I think it's been well over a year now because I, I bond sixes and sevens as well. Right, right. And I the mean, mom's like, what do you mean you're taking the bands off? And it's like, I don't need them. Why, why don't you need them? And then there's a whole nother explanation. But I love the Motion 3D for, for that reason. No bands, simple to place. And, and not only is it simple to place, it takes literally three minutes of doctor time to place it. One word to describe what Sagittal First with Motion 3D has meant for you in your practice. Transformative. Transform my life, yeah. Transformative. That's Happiness. not one word. Happiness. <laughs> Satisfaction of, uh, of the customer. Okay, of the that's customer. not one word. Yeah, that's about nine words. <laughs> <laughs> one word. One, what satisfaction? <laughs> <Is your opinion? laughs> I, I'm, I, I truly, I'm, I'm going with happiness because the patients are happier. Um, my staff's happier. I can tell you I'm happier. You know, with, with there are so many, we've talked about the multivariable effects about clinically about the appliance. There's multivariable effects on my practice, yeah. all right? Yeah. You know, minimal emergency appointments, you referenced that earlier, Dave. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, there is no, really no emergency appointment with the Motion 3D, because you tell them to stop wearing the rubber bands and come see me Monday. Um, it, it, because of the predictability in the practice, you have better workflows, and overall, everything is, I walk into my practice now, and there's very few problems going on. And the cool thing about that is now we have time to attend to the really, really difficult things yeah. and give it the attention it deserves. I would say my single word would be predictable. Predictable, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I it's, <laughs> it's so, so nice to be able to walk into the office in the morning and know exactly what's going to happen and not look at the schedule and go, oh, I still have to deal with that. Yep. I mean predictable makes my life so nice. Absolutely.